Hey everybody, welcome to Mana Moments. I'm Kathy Doremus. I'm a discipleship coach at the Factory Church. And today we're going to be talking about the grace of God. Uh, we're going to look specifically at some words that Paul wrote to Titus. Titus 2 verses 11 to 14, if you want to turn there. Um, and just to give a little bit of background, Titus was a younger man and he had traveled with Paul on some of his missionary journeys and they had shared the gospel together and planted churches. And when Paul writes the letter, Titus has been assigned to stay on the island of Crete, where he is shepherding this group of new believers. And he's come alongside this, this community of disciples and is helping them establish healthy churches. And Paul writes this letter to him and he tells him a lot of different things in it, but one of the things he's talking about is the role that God's grace plays in their lives. So Titus 2, 11 to 14, and Paul writes, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. That's a rich passage. I'd encourage you, please take time to dwell on that, those words apart from our time together. Oh, just sit and linger in it. So much good truth. But we're going to pull out just a couple things God's telling about us, about his grace to us. And the first is something we already know and we already love. It is his grace, his goodness to us that we didn't deserve that saved us. Now, Paul says that right in verse 11, the grace of God that brings salvation. When we were far from him, God came for us. When we were living in rebellion against him and separated from him, he put on our flesh and he came and he dwelt among us and he died for us so that we could be restored to a right relationship with him. He took the punishment in our place. That is grace. We are saved by the grace of God. We didn't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. That gives us reason to celebrate really all day, every day. But as if that wasn't enough, like if this was an infomercial, we'd say, but wait, there's more. Because grace doesn't just save us and then kind of step back and sit on the sidelines and say, hey, you're saved. I'll see you when you get to heaven. But for now, just go on living however you want. You can keep sinning, it's no big deal. Absolutely not. Grace saves us and then grace keeps growing us. God in his grace, he meets us right in our mess, but he doesn't leave us there. He keeps cleansing us, he keeps convicting us, and he is committed to making us like Jesus. He's committed to conforming us to the image of his son. And so grace, yes, grace rescues us from our sin, but then grace removes sin from us. And we see it, it's, it's in the text. If you go back, uh, picking up in verse 12, Paul's like, the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions turn away from how we used to live before we knew Jesus, and to live in this present age, self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. Now just one thing before we go on, um, if you've got your Bible, make sure you don't have a typo there, because it says grace is teaching us to live upright lives, not uptight lives. Like We do not want to be often angered, easily offended, prickly people. That's not what should mark our lives as followers of Jesus. Grace is working in us, um, the fruit of the Spirit. Like it's making us more like Jesus. That's a good thing. We don't want to be prickly people. So um, as I was dwelling in this passage, just, just to feed my own soul, I always want to just kind of linger and, and soak in these truths and praise God. and. But there was a warning that just kept getting impressed on my heart, and I feel like I need to pass it along, just a caution for us. And that is that we never begin to see 
grace as a loophole for us to keep on sinning, right? We don't want to get into that mindset that says, you know, if I'm saved by grace and God's going to keep forgiving, then why not just keep on sinning? Absolutely not. Grace is never a loophole for us to keep loving the wrongdoing that Jesus died for. Grace is a lifeline. It's a lifeline that is drawing us away from the things that rob us and ruin us and deplete us and destroy us and that hinder the intimacy that God created us to enjoy with him. It's not a loophole. It's a lifeline. Grace never gives us permission to excuse our sin. Actually, the opposite is true. It gives us the power to execute it. So as as brothers and sisters in Christ, as disciples of Jesus, may we link arms and may we wage war on every sin that God lovingly exposes in our lives. Not because we're trying to earn his approval. We've got that. But because we want our lives to tell the truth about who we are. And we want our lives to tell the truth about whose we are. So I think that is it for this week. Until next week, may God continue to grow us deeper and may he purify us so that we might truly be a people of his own possession who are eager to do what is good. God willing, I'll see you next week.